what I'm about to argue is that it's not just about airway, it's also about diet. I think diet is an equally important facet of this. Okay. Yep. And so what do we put into our bodies? We put yeah. in air and then we put in food. Okay. Water. I'm just going to, obviously we put lots of water in, but sort of, and all, not all water is equal. And God knows that, you know, who the hell knows what's in tap water. Okay. Um, but for all yeah. intents and purposes, it's air and it's food, oxygen, and proteins, carbohydrates, fats, you put them together in a human body, you get metabolism. Mm -hmm. And metabolism generates energy, and it generates the functioning of the body. Food is huge and is also related to um, mental health and all sorts of health. Disease. And yep. Andrew Huberman yes. did this amazing Nutrition. podcast with a psychiatrist uh, from Harvard. I don't recall his name. I'll put a link in the description. And this guy's whole career is dedicated to nutritional psychology. And what he basically argues is a lot of mental health issues are essentially related to mitochondrial dysfunction. And mitochondrial dysfunction is caused by, well, he doesn't get into causation. He gets into a treatment though. And the treatment for intractable psychiatric illness is keto diet, which is essentially amounts to restricting carbohydrates and adding more fat to your diet. And he has cured, you name it, intractable chronic depression, uh, uh, schizophrenia, mm -hmm. bipolar disorder, all sorts of illnesses he treats with keto diet and then they cure themselves. They, they're solved. And so, yeah. and uh, yet, and yet, what are we being told by the mainstream? We're being told fat is bad and eating high protein animal products is bad. Eat more carbohydrates, eat more plant-based items that are basically high in carbohydrate, which yeah. kicks you out of ketosis, prevents you going into ketosis because to, to get into ketosis, you need number one, calorie restriction, number two, fat intake. Yeah, okay? and I Primarily, you need carbohydrate yeah. restriction and fat intake. And that goes into ketosis, that puts you into ketosis, and then that leads to mitochondrial health, which eliminates mental health issues. I don't think it's just about diet. I think airway is also a critical component. But in both cases, we have the mainstream telling us the opposite of what is actually correct. Yeah, the nutrition and airway, looking at the root cause, basically, that is never the first line of treatment. And that just boggles my mind because isn't that what science is about? Isn't that like what they're claiming to provide as doctors, right? Is looking at the root cause. I think diet plays a huge role. I eat a high fat diet as well. I drink uh, like literally everyone in my neighborhood. I live in New Hampshire is on a CSA for raw milk. Um, From Canterbury Farm. It's in Plymouth, New Hampshire. Uh, it's in Canterbury, New Hampshire. I live in Northern actually, Mass, right on the New Hampshire border. No, Brookford Farm. Oh, uh, okay. wait. No, actually, I think it might be Canterbury Farm. I'm not sure. Um, but, I've had raw yeah. from Canterbury Farms. You get, yeah. It's good. Like, it's not bad for you at all. I don't, I've been drinking that for a long time now. Um, yeah, and look, and at, I look do... at your body composition. You're a healthy weight. Your yep. skin, your skin looks healthy. Your overall look very healthy, you know, except for your airway issue. I don't even know if it, it's an airway issue, right? Um, it might sure. just be a, just TMJ type or sure. possible Cran craniofacial issue. structural issue. Yeah, and that's not something that diet could prevent. Okay, that's posture. I had very bad posture as a child growing up possibly due to these neurological differences. Um, but, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think, to me, it's very obvious that aesthetics correlates with function. Say that one more time, aesthetics what? Correlates with function. Oh, of course. They're two sides of the same coin. They go hand in hand. So then why are we not looking at human faces that way? 
right? Every other mammal develops similarly. You look at dogs and they have similar structures. Why don't we, why aren't we looking at human faces that way? We are mammals after all. Aesthetics should be equal to function. When an orthodontist looks at a case that they've literally mutilated, doesn't that come to mind? Aesthetics is function? Or do they just look at the straightness of the teeth and go, all right, this is a fine looking person. Let's move on. Yeah, I, that's what they do. Uh, and some of us, obviously, you included, me included, a lot of MSE providing orthodontists and oral surgeons included, do look at faces that way. And you would think that a scientific establishment that is so gung-ho about evolutionary biology that they would take a bioevolutionary perspective on these issues as you're suggesting. But for whatever reason, it's like orthodontics and other fields of health are in a cave where they acknowledge that evolutionary science is real, right? And not to step on the toes of religious individuals, because I do think that traditional religion and a lot of the ideas that come out of evolutionary science, I do think those can be brought together. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. But um, there's just fields of health that refuse to embrace the implications of evolutionary science on their field, right? And orthodontics is absolutely one of them. They are not willing to just ask the very simple question of if humans are genetically coding for 32 teeth and yet their jaws are only accommodating 2024 20, or 2028 20, why is this happening how are we violating our wiring and causing this dysfunction in the human machine it's a very simple question 